Y'all know the drill. Please let me know when you can hear me. Tonight is going to be a very, very important show tonight, ladies. Thank you, Melanie. I know you can hear me because you're back here with me. Hey, Lady Posh. She's here as Miko at the Jour being trainer. Lady Black. Hey, all the ones are flying. Ladies, listen. I know y'all see the title, but let me tell you something. This is going out to a whole lot of Black women, right? Not just the one y'all have in mind, okay? Um, it's it's a lot of black women that need to be, you know, addressed tonight, okay? Because this it's a safety thing. Before I get into all of that shit, there, one of the things that brought me to this was, you know, people making awful videos about divestors, divestment, and what divestment really is when they have the shit all the way wrong. But y'all remember when I was here last time, right? And oh, I kind of knew. <laughs> right, that it was going to be some pushback when it came to making fun of folks' death. See, but here's the deal, okay? I don't give a fuck, all right? I do not hyperbolically, is that a word? I'm never hyperbolic when it comes to saying what Black women are doing, how they're acting, and the things that they need to change the fuck up in order to make way for their life to get better, to improve, to improve their safety, improve their weight, improve their social circles, so on and so forth, okay? Here's the deal, y'all. So I wanna show y'all something real quick. This is from my last live stream, pull up. 
Do y'all remember when I was talking about the lady who was crying out to the Lord? Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. Not my baby ass bitch. Right. So let's do something real quick, because I want to see how, how hyperbolic I was actually being. Was, was, was I making black women a caricature or was I going ahead and showing you what the fuck black women actually do when they're being hypocritical about their babies? So let's see what I said last time, shall we? Period. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Have mercy, Lord. You took them too early. He's a goddamn human. The people are racist. Jesus, not my baby ass bitch. Pull up. So that was being hyperbolic. Was it? Mm, let's see. Because I got shared a post. Let's just look at it. Let's just see what happened. Have my baby, Lord. Have my baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't get the fuck up here and misrepresent you. Are y'all out of y'all mind? Let me tell y'all something, okay? First of all, the people that were saving your baby Jesus look like Derek Chauvin. And I told you to knock it off because you were going to need someone that looked like Derek Chauvin in the near future. Well, oh, my motherfucking goodness. What? Was you do, 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 let, let's do that again because not her baby Jesus. When somebody sent me that goddamn post, I'm like, this is a joke, right? No. I thought she was just enjoying the show and saying, look, look, somebody's imitating you. No, it's not that. It's the real deal. There's a big booty nigga up there. He's part of the transport team. You know, you're talking to a registered nurse. So I'm telling you what that big booty nigga was doing. He was part of the lifting crew. But the lifesavers kind of looked like Derek on that ass. Let's do that again. Oh, my baby, Lord. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby. Oh, his name Montgomery. His name Montgomery. Oh, my baby. Jesus, his name is Jesus. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby, God. Now, you bitches out there that want to pretend like fat meat ain't greasy. Well, the fact of the matter it is, you have to remember, I'm 46 years old. I've been watching you bitches for damn near half a century. I know what you are. I know what you're about. I know what you like to do. I know how hypocritical you are, especially when it comes to black men. You sat your ass up there and acted a fool and you needed Derek or his tribe quicker than you thought you would. Nobody that looked like three, six mafia came in there popping their collar to try and help your motherfucking kid. Stop it. All right. I just had to be petty right there real quick. Let me go ahead and take that down. Oh my gosh. She look at how she portrays black women. That's not what we are. That's not what we do. Well, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I told you, you are in a vulnerable position. You are in a needy position. So therefore, you might want to stay your ass off of here with your government name talking shit to these people that you need. Right? It was the white men and white women in that building saving your baby. And guess what? They succeeded. He's still here. So you might want to change up a little bit because people are losing sympathy for you. Right? Anyway, I see a lot of groups of people, doesn't matter like what sector they're in, hypergamy, <laughs> esoteric, pro-black, dating coaches, whoever the fuck, you know, image consultants or whatever. What they all have in common is they have a problem with divestors. And what is divestment? Because you need to know what that is. It's putting yourself first, your safety first, your health first. It ain't about dating, but it is about getting away from that toxic ass community called Blackistan. And that includes both the men and the women at this point. But when I look around, when I'm in discord, sometimes the ladies share some stuff, share videos, whatever. And I scroll through all of that stuff because the ladies are really busy in there. But sometimes shit catches my eye. Over a year ago, somebody was given a lesson about a divested disaster date. Really? Usually when y'all bitches talk about dating 
and it's a black man involved, you just say man. But when she's dating a white man, you make sure that you say that he's white. So it's either man versus white man. Okay. I thought you said, a lot of you, that all near the race, right? But for some reason, whenever somebody has a bad date with a white man, your main focal point is not only pointing out that he's white, but then trying to snatch divestment out the air and see that's a problem. Divestment is a problem. No, bitch, your revi- reverse psychology is a fucking problem. Huh? Listen, we don't come for y'all. You, what you're doing in your dating coaching sector and trying to, you know, get black women to do better or whatever, keep it real with me. You're doing that so that they'll be more desirable to white, to black men. Correct? Correct? Because what you try to do is point out a date between a black woman and a white man that didn't go well. Let me ask you this. Were you under the impression that you can't have a bad date with a white man? Sometimes people don't mesh, right? Because it's divestment. What they're putting out is a narrative where if you try it and it don't go well, then all men are bad. But you can run through 86 pookies, right? But keep trying him. Y'all need to leave divestors alone. You look goofy as fuck out here with that shit, huh? And a lot of you bitches that's talking about white men ain't never dated one, fucked one, been in a relationship with one, none of that shit. But you somehow are the, you know, pank book lesson guru on some goddamn how white men are. That's interesting to me. Okay. Go, Aaliyah, you got anything? It's a packed house because this show getting ready to tell y'all something tonight. Well, I don't have much because a lot of these bitches, I'm really exhausted with all going back and forth with a lot of these people that cannot keep us the fuck out of their mouth and the fuck off of their channel. But I understand why they won't get off our tits especially swinging on the ends of our nipples. I'm understanding why they can't do that because if if what we're saying is true, if everything we get up here and say is true, then that means that you have no choice but to cut off the, the black men. And who does that leave? That includes their sons, their brothers, their nephews, their cousins, hell, even their goddamn daddies. So if what we're saying is true and that's where they have the problem at. They don't have a problem in everything that we're saying so much. They have a problem with it when we say hashtag all. That's always been their main issue. They don't have a problem with anything. It's that one word all that really has everybody's panties in a bunch. But guess what? We don't give a fuck. We haven't given a fuck in the last four years. And you can try to throw us under the bus all you like and bring up all the disastrous interracial dating scenarios that you want to. It's still not going to stop us from telling black women to get the fuck on. Run for your lives. Run for the hills. Put yourself first. Cut black men out of your dating pool. Bet everybody else. Go and find your happiness. And that does not, a black man is not required for that. You're not going to stop us from spreading that message. That's been the message since day one. And you can be as mad about that as you want to. You can make all the videos you want to. You can put us all in the titles of your videos all you want to. But you're not going to stop a goddamn thing. Learn that. Period. Uh Hey, DZ, do you mind if I chime in really quick? Absolutely, go ahead. Well, hey, ladies. So, Aaliyah DZ, we have to remember at the end of the day also, it really comes down to protecting their bag because let's face it, if these dating girls encourage Black women to focus on Black males in terms of dating and appealing to them and all this shit, then that means that those Black women, because we know how Black males really feel about Black women, so basically those women will be stuck on single them for 10, 20 years. And that means that those women will keep raking in the corn coins. That's what it is. Like they don't want them to stop being stuck on stupid because they want to keep, keep getting those checks. And you're yeah. right, Tyra, because if you notice, they have no issue when it's the opposite and the men come on their shows and say that they don't want black women outright. When they say that specifically, they just chalk that up to being a preference and they're allowed their preferences and that's okay, right? So my thing is, why isn't it okay when it's the opposite? It should be that same level of understanding. But again, when you say 
cut all black men out of the equation to remove them from the gene pool that's like saying you don't want what came from their womb and a lot of black women really take issue with that i'm sorry mm, it is what it is what's happening snapple hey y'all hey you too i feel like it's been a little minute you know i wasn't here the last time <laughs> for the for the mammy holes in the cloud y'all thought y'all got rid of me you can't get rid of me bitch <laughs> and i just snapped back i'm back bitch um regarding this this content creator you mentioned what what, what was i gonna call her um stank <laughs> stank guidelines even talking stank pamphlet to guidelines her. yes yes because what what no I don't know what video you're talking about. That must have went over my head too. But I know this is this bitch is a mammy hoe. She's extremely militant. Militant. She's a militant manosphere mule, and she's always caping for the kings. So I'm not surprised to know that she had a video with divester in the title throwing shade. But fuck that. Fuck her. Fuck her all the way. Fuck all these hoes. I just I'm just happy to be here with y'all. I cannot wait to get into the social scroll social credit scores because i'm about to hurt a lot of people's feelings when we get there <laughs> oh it's going to be a problem tonight ladies mistress rogue what you got because tonight is important so stay tuned oh i got a whole lot but you know i'm gonna reserve some of that for the social credit but regarding these bitches who always gotta have our names in their mouths like it's dick or Tyrone's dick in this case. Bitch, we don't give a fuck. You ain't changing a goddamn thing over here. The message has been and remains all. Because how do you make up 13% of the population's population within the United States, but your numbers are dropping? You're now like, what, roughly 11.5, 10% of the American population or at this point? Because y'all are, you know sending each other to the ether you have bigger problems than us telling black women to get the fuck away from y'all what i think this comes down to is not solely just y'all needing black women it's y'all needing to exploit black women's labor let's face it much to the detriment black women are fiercely loyal when it comes to a lot of things it is a it's a double-edged sword the same sort they will to get shit done it cuts them in the end because they are sometimes loyal to the wrong fucking people you need that loyalty because who else is going to lament before the masses about y'all poor little thuns being adhd or rock-headed motherfuckers a snapple call like snapple call them girl we all know what this is y'all can't afford for anybody to leave that community because as i said before and i'll keep saying if black women wholly divest if black women just leave there's no community they're going to cannibalize each other period let me show y'all something real quick this is why these content creators that you know first of all when you're gonna make a negative video about a divester find a divester first that's like you can't make cake without you know flour right you don't have a video about a divester when you don't have a divester that's weird that's very very weird that you'd snatch an instagram thought that tried to get flued out and get the bag like some of these other bitches are teaching them and the date didn't go well it didn't go well period but y'all be labeling everybody divesters i'm telling you my cat is divested at this point but check it this is the violence policy center okay and i'm gonna scroll past this really quickly those of y'all that are on the playback just pause the video so you can see what it says every single year since 2000 it, we're, we're at year 23 now they have been like taking your stats and putting them right in front of you and bitches still have the nerve to go ahead and say well you know and they co coach you up serve you up in the fashion that black men want you served up they're telling you to you know get your natural hair going what else they want submissive um you need to bring something to the table pay half the bills you know don't be argumentative all the all the shit that you know they try to mold you to do what they're doing is serving you up on the table to the people that take you out the most okay every year every single year they put together pages and pages of studies what black men do to you first they do women in general and then your stats are always the worst when they finally get to black women you're always three times the rate at something even unaliving right this is you but still in the youtube sphere facts don't matter okay when we say stop dating black men this is why okay of the black listen of the black victims who knew their offender 56 percent were wives common law wives ex-wives or girlfriends 
So with that number right there, wouldn't that say automatically stop dating them, stop getting into relationships with them? If over half of their victims are somebody they were fucking, right? Won't that say, mm, I probably should 86 them out of mine? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Can I just say, and this is exactly why that stupid ass talking point that I've heard about, oh, divestors are bullies and they try to bully people into, you know, caring about who who black women sleep with. I don't care who black women sleep with. This is exactly why we do kind of give a fuck because it's like y'all fucking y'all's enemies and they taking y'all out. Y'all should be glad that somebody is even giving a fuck enough to tell y'all to, to divest. Like this is exactly why it has to be acknowledged that the mammy hoes are fucking the kings. Like, there's no way around this shit. There's literally data proving that it's happening, but bitches want to gaslight and play stupid on YouTube and be like, oh, divestors are it. The divestors are just bullies and they just care. I don't, I could never care about who somebody's sleeping with. Bitch, okay, so go on and get got by your common law. Great. <laughs> but <laughs> so, no, go ahead. Let, let me address this slide real quick. That slide right there is always on their website every single year is damn near copied and paste. So I snatched the one from 2000. We are in 2023. I need y'all to look at that last goddamn line, right? Male offenders were known as intraracial. What does that mean? That means that black men are fucking you up. Right. But you got bitches out here that snatch these weird ass dates from Instagram and people hooking up on Tinder. Oh, it didn't go well. They didn't match. So white men are bad. And they harper on that shit when when you're actually being taken the fuck out by black men. Okay, all of the relationships, 95 percent of them were intraracial. I need some answers here. What is your real problem with divestors? I know what it is. You need black women to stay on post. There's no other race of women or men because we in a different time time and date, age or whatever that can fill that spot that black women fill. The mule, the mammy, the person that's always fighting. Nobody, nobody can fill that. They can't replace the loyalty. Like I said, black women, as always, are loyal to a fucking fault to their own detriment. How else could you explain them spending centuries being tethered to motherfuckers that sold them out to the ex-slaves, to the Arabs first, and then to the white men? Furthermore, if white men are bad, then give them back all their shit. I'm just going to keep saying that. They're always bad until you need to get an SSI check for badass rockhead taekwondarians. They're always bad until you need food stamps to feed them the bastards. They're always bad until black men need food stamps. They're always bad. For men who are so bad and have built most of the world being the global minority, don't you think it's about time y'all got with the winning team? You're already with the winning team. You're exploiting his resources. If he's so bad, leave his shit alone and, leave, and keep his name out your fucking mouth. Mm. I have a question. Hello? Go ahead. You said you had a question okay. and I was waiting on the question. Okay. Why can't these me all YouTubers and gurus or whatever, they have their opinion. What we present is an it's it's only an opinion backed by facts right if so why are facts. you gonna get mad at somebody's opinion only we're not trying to force you to do anything right listen if it's backed by facts then it's a fucking fact it says 95 percent of the time when you are in a relationship with a man and he offs your motherfucking ass it's a black man pull the- up Ebony, to answer your question, the reason why there's so much pushback is because despite, look, I know it's easy for us to get bogged down in the latest mammy antic, but the truth is divestment is catching on more and more and they're shook. That's what it is. More and more black women. Because they would have to, they would have to change their entire platform, period. Because what they're doing, ladies, is dressing you up, making you cute to serve you up to black men. And then whenever they can find, because it's hard to find, bitch, a date that didn't go well with a black woman and a white man. My God, the video is always over 20 minutes long and they do part one, part two, because that is that's a jewel to them. That's a fine to them because it's not common. Well, it's a part of their propaganda, but divestment is also when you even there are parallels. 
divestment is a financial, it's a financial term also, which you can basically be a business and you offload the stuff, the shares and things like that, that's dragging your business down, basically increasing your rate of return. Black women would do well to even listen to this because if you chuck, you chuck the black man, serious, sons, kings, kings, whatever you want, chuck them and increase your rate of return in your life. Why not do that? You're mad at the messengers. They are. They're, they're mad and they're also trying to keep their platforms going. Uh, ladies, your platforms are outdated. Trying to dress black women up to make them presentable to black men, that's ridiculous. That's so 1996 around this bitch. I thought y'all was some fashion, get ready with me, big forehead ass bitches. L look forward, forehead. It's not that anymore. Nobody wants to be dressed up for a broke ass, dusty son of a bitch. Are you serious? Melanie, you got anything? <laughs> I do got something to add. Hey, y'all. I think that, um, just like y'all said earlier, at the state that black women are in, they are tired. They are hungry. They are desperate. A lot of them, ask me how I know, they're broke. And the last thing they need to be worried about is who we're not given a chance and who we're talking bad about and all that stuff. And I also wanted to add something I think that kind of makes sense. I think some of these women are not as stupid as they may come off. They know the truth. They know what the real deal is. Melody, but I, I am so glad you said that. That, it, could, that you got perfect timing right now. What Melanie just said is they know the truth. They do. Please do not let these women fool you into thinking that they don't know that these dusty ass motherfuckers are trash. I have a mammy, y'all. Go, go right ahead and then I'm just, I got to show y'all what the fuck is the tea. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, like, like what I just said, and this is all a defense mechanism, but, but at the end of the day, they got to keep black women somewhere. They know us, they know what the truth is, but they got to keep us dangling somewhere. Listen, these bitches, need, you need to quit coming for me. The stats are always going to be on my side and your opinion is always going to be on your side. Um, there's a woman out here who is not a divester, but she she got melanin in her name. So, you know, you already know what that gives. And she even knows. So let me let somebody that identifies with you tell you what's up. This is a very weird comment to leave, considering the fact that so many black men unalive black women on an hourly basis and still demand protection and defense from us. And just so we're clear, I ain't asked none of y'all to care about me. Not at all. Not even in the slightest, because I am 39 years old. I have lived long enough to know better. There is no scenario in my life where I have experienced harm from a man and he wasn't a black man. If I was abused, it was by a black man. If I was mistreated, it was by a black man. See, what y'all don't realize is our proximity to y'all does not make us any safer. We would be better off at a Klan convention than sitting around y'all. Because there's a probability that the white man's just going to call us the N-word and let us go on about our day. Y'all will still call us out our name and take us out and hide the fact that you did it for other men so that those black men don't get in trouble. Then your black ass mama will sit there and defend you, let you hide out in her basement when the police come looking for you. The police, when they finally get a hold of you, will treat you just as well as they treat white men that shoot up theaters by not even causing you any harm. Because please notice that black men, when they are the perpetrators of crimes against black women, oftentimes are never abused by the police. Like y'all do notice that, right? Because the police know that they want you to creep your behinds right back into the community to further the harm that you are causing. And even if you go to trial, you'll probably walk right back out the building and be allowed to cause more harm again. If there are so many of you that care about your women, how come black women aren't safe around other black men? You would think that since every black woman is the daughter of somebody, that there would be a situation where none of us should ever have to worry about being mistreated, right? Not only do y'all not care about your women, you care so little about your women that other groups of men know it, and that's why they deliberately attack your women.
They know that you are so much of a punk biatch that you won't do anything about it. You won't cause any change and no one is going to check them for it. So not only have you made it clear to the world through your inaction that you do not care about black women, you will sit there and pretend to care just to be combative in a chat with other black women in my comment section. There are 73 replies to this comment that you left on my video. Because instead of coming into this like a person that actually gave a damn, you chose to be combative. You chose to be aggressive through your words and have triggered so many women that this post that I made is boosted up through the algorithm. And just so we're clear, I am not doing what you're accusing me of to black men. I'm simply pointing out your inability to respond with the same energy that y'all have for other black men when a black woman is being harmed right in front of you. You are in my comments gaslighting, disrespecting, and insulting women, but then you are saying there are plenty of us that truly care about our women. And I will continue to let the girls gather you. I just finally wanted to address this because I don't want any other women to sit there and think that I'm ignoring him. I see him. Y'all are doing amazing at chewing him up. Please feel free to continue. Check it, ladies. I let that entire thing play because I want y'all to know. Mammies know. They know the stats, but still will go up against you if you talk shit about them. See, the key to making sure black women aren't upset is to talk shit about black men, don't talk shit about them, and make sure that you continue to entertain them to try to so-called gather them. Let me tell you something. Black men done answered your ass already. Did you hear what I said? They don't want to talk to you. They're having, they're getting their rocks off arguing with your stupid ass, and y'all gonna keep the shit up. Ladies, y'all remember, Way a couple years ago, I had people wall to wall to wall to wall when I went on head and set the stage and say, hey, first of all, your safety comes first and these niggas ain't worth the fuck. Right. Then when I said, hey, ladies, turn around and leave them behind. Don't say shit to them. Don't be caught with them. Don't don't entertain them in any way that's not mandatory. That's when. I started getting haters because when you say don't deal with them no more, that's a problem. Saying they ain't shit is not a problem. But if you say, okay, they ain't shit, don't deal with them no more ever. Then that's when you start getting haters, right? It, Can I and easy, this is, this is exactly why you have encouraged us to start cutting off the mammies that still want to entertain cicadas with because they know about it and they keep wanting to dip their toe, dip their whole coochie into the, pit of fire and then they want to run back and expect us to clean them up and go woo 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 with whatever hurts that the cicada did to them no like you know better why should we why should we give you any sucker why should we assist you why should we hold your hand through the through your tears when you keep doing the same stupid shit yeah. another thing dz i'm sorry but <laughs> All black people have done is taken victimhood, used it as a political ploy, and basically black women have allowed black men to just be crazy. And they I'm did. sorry, fuck all of y'all with your reparations. You don't deserve any fucking reparations if you can't get those perpetrators out of your freaking community. Wow. Well, Aaliyah, you got anything, ma'am? Uh oh, Aaliyah done got up and walked away. Um, Nefertiti, you said you had something to say. Oh, oh no, ma'am. Um, but I will say this person on the screen. I made this comment in the back. I said that um, she looked like she got slapped by Moses, but but I do take that back because I think that uh, Mariana Trench is probably as deep as her part, and that's all I gotta say on the matter. Excuse me. Mm, 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 mm. Well, how was that for a pink book lesson for you? How was those facts for you, huh? I'm trying to see something. Bring facts instead of trying to make up these sci-fi fiction novels about white men flying black women out and then strapping them onto a fucking spaceship and they going off to Pluto together. And while he up there, he calling her the hard R. Knock it, knock it the fuck off. Um, I'm tired of the delusion. Seriously, I'm fucking tired of the delusion. 
That's not what's happening. Black women want you to think that if you go on a date with a white man, that y'all are going to go to his house and there's going to be Confederate flags all over the fucking wall. And he's going to say, come suck my dick, gal. No, that's not the tea. Y'all need to stop this shit. Right? Dizzy. So, yes, ma'am. She need to change her name. First of all, there ain't no pink book left. There ain't no motherfucking book to anything. <laughs> all her fucking, all her, all her content is, is modern women this and modern women that. Like, the bitch ain't, ain't educating nobody. There ain't nothing profound. She just like these other BWE mammy hoes that say the same shit over and over and over and over and takes every little every little trending topic and throws her little uh, manosphere mule spin on it. Like that bitch ain't educating nobody. So she don't even deserve to have book in her title. Bitch, change your shit. Here's your fucking pamphlet at best, bitch. Can I tell y'all something? And this, I put this on my children's lives. I have never clicked one of those goddamn videos. Not one. Okay, when I see a bunch of thumbnails where you're not telling what the actual problem is and you're basically trying to gather black women and let them know that they are the actual problem, it's not the truth. Mammies are the problem. Actually, black women that's walked away from that community, they're not the problem. But you're making it seem like black women are the reason black men are the way they are. They played a part in it. Oh, absolutely. They played a part in it. But guess what, bitch? They're not the they're not the sole problem, okay? In y'all's book, I thought men were supposed to lead. Well, look at where they led these black women to: shaking, twisting, twerking, popping, fucking, eating ass, and getting a bag and being extra, right? And cemeteries. You forgot the cemetery because that's where a lot of them end up. Right, 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 right. That part. Do there. Yes, ma'am. I have a question about the invisible weave part <laughs> on this thing. Is that what it's called? Invisible weave. Um, is that her? Like, I just need to understand. Like, is her like what's going on underneath <laughs> the tracks? Like, what is happening? <laughs> I don't know what, the, maybe it's two fat braids up under there. I don't know. My, when my husband saw it, he said that he labeled that a banana part. I don't know what, the, I don't know what he meant by that, but he, it looks crazy as shit, man. It looks I know terrible. What you, mean, you ever seen a banana split when you cut it down the middle to cut, open it up? You have to open it up kind of wide. That might be what he meant. Stop. <laughs> that. Stop that right now. Uh, so wide. They, I can they, see they. what the fuck she thinking. I'm not they, lying. They, Social services office, black women in the social services office more than anybody. Mm. And mm. another thing, if the black women walk away like we divestors want them to, black men lose all their protection. Mm. Mm. Oh, well, not, not I, just, that, oh, I, just, I just need for you women that are out there in these sectors, getting a bag off these black women and teaching them to sleep in their wigs and sprinkle this over here. And, you know, just, just get their selves together to make themselves more presentable for black men. What, okay, let's say you do that. The, the unaliving rate will go all the way up. Do y'all understand that since this uh, violence policy center started taking these stats, they've only gotten worse? Okay, so where are we gonna be in 2030? with the stats because we at 4.8 right now these motherfuckers gonna get mm, unalive you quicker than you can fix a hot pocket in a microwave pretty soon but at least you're cute at least you can't tell where the lace start on your wig at least you got your bbl at least your body snatched right i know who the real body snatchers are though go ahead kyra oh i it I just wanted to also say, speaking, keeping in line with not feeling sorry for mammies, I see some of you ladies in the live chat mentioning Ashanti. Don't feel sorry for her. Do not feel sorry for her in about six months when Nelly does the cicada thing that they all do. Don't feel sorry for her. Don't listen to her baby mama blues, tears, and all that shit either. She knows what the fuck she's doing. Check it, y'all. I hope you're well gathered. Y'all are going to see people bad mouthing divestment if they have anything to do with the black community or black adjacent or some sort of SJW. They're going to have a problem with divestors because it's like this. Divestors are removing the foundation of what the black community is. And a house cannot stand without a foundation. It will sink into the mud, period. So if you remove black women, you have a problem. So at hypergamy, femininity, all these different uh you know, sectors, they're going to have a problem with divestors, period. All right. 
what's coming down the pike, y'all? And I know y'all got a lot to say on this shit tonight. So let's go. Ladies, I talked to y'all about getting away from mammies and getting the, the toxic people out of your life, not only for your mental health, because here's the thing. Later on down the line, you are going to be judged by the company that you keep. And if you think this can't happen, you better you better follow this timeline right here. Y'all know over in China, right? They started with the digital ID basically in 2018 where you can put your, your driver's license, your important papers, your degrees, all of that shit can go on one ID, okay? That's how it started. Then they went on ahead and graduated it up <laughs> to include your behavior. Because make no mistake about it, social credit, right? It has to do with what type of motherfucking bitch you are. Pull up. All right. I'm going to let them explain to you what the social credit is. And I'm going to show you how close it's getting because it moved from China and it done hopped over to the we're going to get there. Let's go. Baseline for each citizen is 1,000 points per person, in which the government gives so there is a constant equality amongst its citizens. The scores are part of a tiered rating system, which rates them based on their credit worthiness. Going a step above the caste system of countries like India to give people a score determining the privileges they're allowed or punishments they must endure. For scores 1050 and over, ranked as AAA or AA, you get benefits like healthcare priority, free healthcare checks under the age of 64 and get to reap the rewards at the top of the social hierarchy. Now for scores between 960 and 1029 points ranked as A plus A or A minus, your kids get priority for certain schools and the government can also give you the privilege of becoming a model citizen for the rest of society for publicity. School enrollment depends on model citizen status and you will get preferential care and treated better in employment with preference over other candidates that apply for the same job. Scores between 850 and 959, ranked as B, are locked into that rank for two years with the obligation to have lectures on how to be a better citizen with visits of government officials and experts. You are essentially subjected to re-education. C rank, scores between 600 and 849, are locked into that rank for three years before you can move up rank. Government visits and inspections are routine and you will be kept on a list where your information will be stored by government officials to keep tabs on you. You cannot receive welfare, cannot win awards or honours and cannot run for political office. The lowest rank D for scores below 599 are seen as the lowest of the low. Regarded as untrustworthy by the government, you are locked into D rank for five years before you can rank up. You're publicly blacklisted and revoked of all titles and qualifications you've obtained. You're subject to lose your job, government funding and travel ability. You are rewarded or penalised depending on the actions you commit that the state defines as good and bad. For example, talking negatively about the government or an official on social media will have you lose a lot of points. Any sort of political dissidence is penalised by the CCP and they will be sure that you know your place when talking about them in such a way. The government will do whatever they can to get rid of you and silence any criticism of the status quo. So, like I said, ma'ams, get these people out of your life. Do not even have them in your contacts. I'm telling you, this is getting closer and I'm going to prove this shit tonight. OK, I want y'all to know that all behaviors are checked. OK, it went from digital ID to now that you can you, you agree to it because make no mistake about it. You'll have people raging against the machine, but it's going to be implemented. Look at all the things that America has raged against, but it's here right now. And a couple of things I, mean, I can't mention because it's kind of, you know, goes against community guidelines or whatever. But you'll have people fighting against this, but it's coming. So you are in a rush. You are trying to get to work. You don't go to the corner and walk across the street like you're supposed to. And you get put on a board of shame, ladies. They not only put your name up on the board of shame, they debit your digital ID for what the fuck you just did with the fine associated with jaywalking. Pull up. 
I want y'all to take a look at this. That's a speeding fine right there. Okay. You got caught speeding. Boom. Debited your shit. Huh? Let's look at the walk of the, the board of shame real quick. Y'all, it's on its way. So the man jaywalked, okay? He wasn't even finished crossing the street before they put his fucking face up there, right? I know y'all think this is sci-fi, but it's not, all right? Listen, everything you do is going to be debited around this bitch. Now, I want you to remember when they first implemented or put the idea out there, it was 2018. It took three and a half short years for it to get put the fuck up out there. Ladies, and then I'm going to pass the mic because I know I'm fucking rambling. Check this shit out. So they have an app over there in China where it lets you know where all the bum bitches are at so that you can move away. Not just, you know, move resident housing or whatever or move where you live. If they're in the area simply shopping, they let you know and you get the fuck on. Because guess what? Being around bum bitches is going to start costing you. Yes, ma'am. That's the screen goddamn shot of her looking to make sure there's no bum bitches around her so her social credit rating doesn't go down. And if you think this can't happen, you go ahead and keep doing what the fuck you're doing. What you got, Mrs. Rowe? I am so glad we are finally at my favorite part of the show tonight. What I got is a whole lot. So it turns out this might not just be going to America. It might be a worldwide thing. And let me explain myself. I happen to move, maneuver through a few circles where certain topics are discussed. And do you want to know what people are universally tired of, DZ? Ladies in the chat, anybody? They're tired of nigga bitches, niggering, and the niggas, okay? <laughs> That's a universal problem because everywhere y'all go, y'all fuck up something. You drive down property values, you're still in left, right, and sideways, you're in somebody's face talking about how wastest they are and all the things they did to your people and your ancestors as if you could name one of your motherfucking ancestors. Have y'all even know who your daddy is, but I digress. And the one thing they all have in, com in common is their need to get rid of you, to quell you from coming into their countries, crossing their borders, overtaxing their systems, doing all these things. So I personally think this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It is about goddamn time there was some consequences for being bum broke nigga bitches who can't stop having niggering and fucking niggas. So to each his own, just stay away from me. I got to keep my credit score high and tight. Listen, I'm downloading the app as soon as it's available because I want to know where you bum bitches are so that I can exit stage left, right? What you got, Melanie? All I got to say is with this is going to be scary for a lot of people, but they're going to they gonna learn one way or the other, and I ain't telling them nothing. Hmm, that part. What's up, Snapple? Wow. <laughs> Mistress Roll kind of took the words right out of my mouth, but I think this is really necessary for the Blacks because they have been a nuisance and menaces to society for quite some time now. And, you know, I just would like to add, you know, a little suggestion, you know, if, if you know, the people in charge are watching. Uh, could you add um, something so that the people that smoke reefer can be um, <laughs> highlighted as well? Because, you know, when I'm scanning, I want to make sure, like, I don't want to no no weed heads around <laughs> i don't want nobody that got like like if you got like negative in your savings account like, there's just certain things of course i don't want no criminals no jaywalkers i don't want no drug addicts i don't want no criminals if you bitch if you got a mug shot i don't give a fuck if it was something petty from way over back then bitch you can't sit with me um i'm here i'm so here for this because these blacks they have gotten out of hand this is unacceptable <laughs> this is just unacceptable y'all motherfuckers is out here stealing tearing up these people's businesses assaulting people unaliving people with no motherfucking consequences and then y'all want to scream racism and you already know that's going to be the first thing that they cry about this oh that's racist oh, okay yeah you know everything what? you know what it, it, everything it is, is racist Cause y'all ain't mm. shit. That's why. Yeah, y'all ain't oh, shit. And so Snapple, what? let me add to your list. Uh, make sure you got a social credit score for these SJW bitches too. Cause I'm tired of y'all. Oh my god, we need to stand up. No, no, no. You sit your It'll be social there. deficit ass down. You bitches. How you go? You know they say it's going to be there, ladies. Points. All of that behavior 
all of that behavior that you see right now, y'all better get it out your system, okay? All this picketing and acting a fool at when you don't get your cheese on your Whopper <laughs> or they forgot to cut it in half, y'all better knock it the fuck off. It's not going to be socially acceptable here in the coming years. And y'all, I know y'all still like, oh, it's over in China. I'm going to tell y'all something. It done made its way to Europe. So check it, ladies. You won't be able to eat. All they got to do is flip a fucking switch and you no longer exist. There's an Asian woman on TikTok who, you know, she kind of got blacklisted and her uncle had to feed her and help her and all this shit here because her social credit was not high enough to even shop to get food or clothing. Y'all, even the vending machines, check it. You need a 350 social credit score just to access this machine in China, just to get a drink, to get a beverage. Insane. Imagine when this comes here. Because you know it's coming. Think about it. You're thirsty. You say something offensive on the internet. You say something that offends or pisses someone off. No more water for you. No more soda for you. No more grocery stores for you. You think your bitches is thirsty now trying to get black men's attention. You're going to literally be thirsty out here acting a fucking fool. Ladies, but die best. Yes. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm just saying, like, first of all, this is wonderful because think about all the people who are actually upstanding citizens of society. They don't do anything to anybody. They don't harm anybody. They're responsible. They pay their bills. They do their careers or whatever. They deserve to have the first dibs at the best shit because they are not out here causing chaos and destruction. So like anybody that got a problem with this, I think you're just an op-ass bitch. Like anybody that got a problem with this, you one of them motherfuckers that want to go ransack places and you, you, you want your hand out and shit. Like, no, bitch, you got to earn your keep, ho. You need to be, you know, be responsible and be a good person. And it's like, if you're not, then no, bitch, you're not getting no motherfucking vending machine, bitch. You're not getting no good apartment. You're not getting no good housing. No, like, I love this. This is amazing. Shout out I to think it's hilarious. I, I want this as well. This this shit should have been done 50 years ago. And I guess the technology wasn't there. I don't know because you don't know every fucking thing that, you know, the, the people in power have. But this this is a long time coming. Everybody that has decent social behavior is at the mercy of the ones that have awful social behavior. So when you sitting down eating dinner in public, you have to hope that that uh, car that just pulled up with these black folk in it ain't finna get out and ruin the evening. You're at their mercy. They're not at our mercy because we sit and chill and we're, we're being quiet. We just haven't, you know, using our inside voice and that type of shit. But oh, Lord, you can hear the car before it even comes into the parking lot. Not only because the shit raggedy, but they blare an NBA young boy out the goddamn shit. And you can hear the metal just r rattling all over the fucking place. I cannot wait until this is Easy. here. And ladies, take a look at your screen. And then after me, Nefertiti, go right ahead. Check it. Remember I told you, right? First, it started with just a simple ID, a simple digital ID. It was introduced as just convenience, right? Ladies, that's how it started over there in China. Go right ahead, Nefertiti. I find this hilarious. It's almost kind of like <laughs> for, for the esoterical people. Uh, Karma said, fuck a lifetime. Let me hand you these consequences today. Like, let me just Amazon these consequences to you. I really think, <laughs> I think this is going to be fabulous because I feel like, like you just said, it really sucks that when you go out and you carry yourself in the best way possible, you handle your business but you have to be worried that you're going to offend the person who has come in and offend, offended everybody else. But if you say something, then you're the dickhead. Like, I just, I am, I'm happy for this, whatever. Like, if you don't know how to act, then you don't need, you don't need to be around people who know how to act. What do you, what you know? Yes, ma'am. I gotta say this. They had this technology, this capability 15 years ago, mm -hmm. but I honestly believe with the whole pandemic and all people acting a fool and a, it rushed it here. You see what I'm saying? This is something that can kind of help get people in under control, especially the people from Blankistan, uh, because, you know, they're just letting them out of jail for nothing. So, yeah, they've had this technology for a long time, but implementing it, it had to get bad enough. 
Listen, y'all. I don't know where this person came from, but here's the deal. I'm not talking to him at all because that has to be a dude. I'm talking to y'all. With the way shit is set up right now, black women feed black men. Generally speaking, they feed black men. Therefore, if black women go hungry, they will go hungry by default. Um, I see the LOL at the end. I want y'all to see that LOL at the end. You going hungry is fucking hilarious to them. See, this is why I opened up the show with this paint book and all the rest of these garbage ass bitches that try to trash divestment, right? Black men think it's hilarious. They think it's hilarious when you suffer. You don't believe me, but when I tell you they get off on your degradation and on your suffering, they love that shit. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm not talking to him. I'm talking to you. I'm using that as a receipt. Ladies, I have tons of receipts of black men in glee with you being evicted, being hungry, losing your job, right? It, I, I just, I don't know what else to tell you. So with the shit that's coming down the pike, you might want to go ahead and divest, right? Put yourself first because you're hanging, you're hanging around for a group of men that cannot help you. Okay. I showed y'all in the beginning that woman, old Lord and an old Jesus and asking folks that look like Derek Chauvin to save her son. Okay. They can't do anything but antagonize you and enjoy your goddamn suffering. Just wanted to put that out there. Okay. DZ. Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, and the thing is, I think with this whole social credit thing, the mammies who want to hide cicadas in their house, that want to have their grown sons with, live with them and all that shit, it's going to be a debit. It's literally going to be a social debit to be associated with a black male, especially if he is over the age of childhood. So on one hand, a good news is for divestors, that means you can, you can now better avoid neighborhoods with mammies and their sons. Mm-hmm. So that first slide, y'all, it was just a digital ID. Okay. You're going to, I'm going to tell you, y'all like to call me an oracle and, 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 you know, a psychic and all this shit. When it finally makes it to this shore, when that's introduced, you're going to have people telling you, don't vote for this because it's going to make you lose your privacy. And then you're going to have some riots. You're going to see some white folks rioting, you know, the, the um, preppers and the, you know, the anti-government ass people and all that shit here. Once all of that settles down, it's going to be implemented. Uh, the government is going to let people have their tantrums. They always do, right? And then at the end of the day, they're going to implement what the fuck they want to implement, period. So you can fight it. You can join groups. You can say, you know, I want to, I want to make sure that my, my privacy is protected and all that shit. I got a spoiler alert for you. Your privacy ain't protected right now. That's why I always tell y'all to stop posting weird shit on the internet. Ladies, it's over. It's over for the black community, period. They wouldn't survive one day, shit, one hour up under a system like this in which I showed y'all. I put together uh, what I could of black folk and how they behave in society. You know, I can't show the majority of it. I had clips that I would, because this live was going to be private, but I wanted y'all to see this shit. I had clips of women eating ass in public, right? I had, it's a bunch of fights. All y'all like to do is fight. But I did put the safe ones together, okay? And just imagine right now that it's implemented tomorrow morning. What is tomorrow? December 6th. And this is Black Folk in Society. Close your mouth, DZ.
Shout out to the guy that tipped me after and all of the people that came and helped out after seeing what happened. It really restores my faith in Ladies, that's lightweight. The stuff I wanted to show you, and shout out to Egypt. I don't know where the fuck she be finding some of this stuff, but ladies, that was rated G compared to what they're actually doing. I done seen so much anti-social behavior coming from that community that they wouldn't last probably 30 minutes if that shit was implemented in the morning, okay? All the twerking, all the fighting, all the destruction, all the theft, all the, I mean, and those are what? Sometimes misdemeanors, y'all asses are a mess. So ladies, you saw the app. There will be a way to go ahead and make sure those type of people aren't around you. Why don't you start practicing that shit right now? Right now, so that it won't hit you so hard in the years to come when it finally is fully implemented here because it's going to be fully implemented. After all the tantrums are done, it's going to be implemented. Do you understand me? Go ahead, Mrs. Rowe. You know what? I, that shit is ghetto and embarrassing. I don't know how anybody can walk around and honestly think that anybody in a polite and just society would want to be dealing with these fucking people. First of all, y'all motherfuckers don't want to work, but you feel entitled to every goddamn thing. This is why we absolutely need social credit. And you have to say, don't let them make you think this is a detriment, ladies. This is actually a very good fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you why. Because you are better able to separate yourself from them. Everywhere you go right now as a black woman, they automatically by default think you act like these bonnet wide back mammy bitches and you are not that. Some of us walk into a room with poise and class and professionalism, but we are automatically castigated into the same realm as these bitches. I love this idea because the moment I walk in the room, if there's a bum bitch within a two mile, two mile vicinity, I want to know where she's at so Mistress Rogue doesn't have to be there. You're not about to bring down my social credit. This is why lately I've just been telling people I'm not black, I'm German by penetration. I'm standing on that. I don't give a fuck who don't like it because you bitches have fucked up the brand and you persist in fucking up the brand and you don't give a damn about fucking up the brand and that's what makes it worse. You are well aware of what you're doing. Make no mistake everybody, every strike against black women, anytime they show us in a negative light anytime they make these fucking caricatures of black women it is never anything positive and that is intentional they want you trapped in that goddamn community they need your labor they need your loyalty they need for you to make the changes because they know goddamn well tycoon darius and them ain't gonna do it 
They know damn well. Furthermore, you, you don't want to be around these goddamn people when shit hits the fan. We have seen historically what has happened to the black women who have divested themselves from the fuckery of Blackistan, how well off they, they were, were, as opposed to the motherfuckers who stuck around. Case in point, Rosa Parks. Did y'all know that after um, Rosa Parks took the, sat down on that damn bus, there was a period in her life when she lived in, I believe, Detroit, Michigan, where she couldn't even work. Coretta Scott King went up to a dinner for her, I believe, in March of 1963 or 1962 because she had fallen into ill health. She could not find work. And the only way they could raise money for her was to have a fucking dinner. Where was the Kang while he was marching? Where was the Malcolm X? Where were all these motherfucking social justice fighters and freedom fighters and all of that when it came time to help that woman after the sacrifice she had made? That is what being near or in close proximity to these motherfuckers will do to you. Mm -hmm. They have nothing to offer you. So if you don't, you don't have to like me, but save yourself. You, save yourself so you can stick around and say you hate that bitch, Mrs. Rogan. She can kiss your ass. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm asking. It, exactly. Ladies, you you have to. You have to. It, it's, I remember I told y'all it's not going to be a choice after a while. You're either going to have to shit or get off the pot. A at some point, you won't be able to divest. Did you hear what the man said when he said that once you get in one of those uh, ranks, you're going to be there for years? years and make no mistake about it to get out of that rank there is going to be some social retraining associated with that you are going to have to be able to prove that you are no longer a weirdo a mammy bitch somebody that's always causing destruction and first thing we see is your ass when you walk in the room to get out of that rank and it takes years to do so welcome back Aaliyah how are you Oh, I'm good I'm just here to I just got something to say right quick because see the thing is with this social credit thing. Um, this video, these videos haven't even scratched the surface of the degeneracy that Black mm -hmm. has promoted. And it's funny how the same bitches that was talking down about our respectability politics are now engaging in the same respectability politics because you actually want people to have respect for you, correct? See, I thought so. Nobody ever wants to keep the same energy because let's keep it real. The Black community has promoted all of this fucked up shit. They promoted gang culture. They are morally corrupt and bankrupt they promoted the gang culture so much so that they were crip walking all over the super bowl so let's see who gonna lie about that they promoted macking and pimping they promoted that culture which is just glorified prostitution and sex trafficking yet another talking point the pro blacks tried to steal shout out to snoop Dogg, bishop don juan um Superfly, John Goldie Mickens, Dolomite, Feel More Slim, Ice T. Pimping ain't easy, but somebody got to do it. Shall I continue? See, this is the shit they promoted. If it wasn't that, it's been baby mama, baby daddy culture. It's been, they've been doing that since the 90s. And Fantasia, Fantasia Barino even breathed life back into it with her anthem. So let's stop pretending. Then they promoted the drug culture, drinking lean, dealing drugs, and popping pills, even without consent at times. Shout out to Rick Ross. All Although I'm sure he learned from the best. If it wasn't that, it's ghetto culture. Now it's the whole culture in the hood rat culture. They love talking about fighting and who got hands and who don't. And it's usually other grown ass bitches and niggas that are old enough to know better. Yet this is the shit that they all bust a good laughing at. Just like a lot of people thought that sexy red dry fucking on Twitter was funny too. It's also the domestic violence and fight culture. We're all promoting assaulting and beating the hell out of each other now. But I I suppose we could shout out world star and zeus network for shit like that they've always promoted gratuitous violence with them beating the shit out of each other and put that shit on full display and this is the shit that people from other communities have been trying to mimic and i'll never understand that bullshit but black culture is degenerate as fuck and you can get as mad at us all you want to we haven't given a fuck and going on four years now but let me guess the excuse is white people do it too yeah it's funny how nobody else's culture has glamorize, glorify, or monetize the shit and drove like black folks have. See, nobody's running around in gaudy gold ass chains screaming, look at me, look at all the drugs I sell, look at all the ass I sell. That's black folks. So y'all need to own that shit. 
And if your ass is mad at that, then my suggestion would be for you to look in the mirror because you just may be part of the fucking problem. Because see, my guess is that you already know who you are. And that's why you start catching straight bullets every time we bring something up. So you think that we must be talking directly about you. That's because the hoes know who they are. So that's why you feel it's you every time we mention certain things because the hit hoes start hollering. And that's y'all problem. Because y'all know damn well y'all have helped these black men promote this shit and not only that you have helped participate in that shit too and you resent anybody who has the nerve to talk about it mm. well, thank you Aaliyah because how's that for a pain thank you Aaliyah thank you. that was a read thank you Aaliyah I'm glad thank you Aaliyah. Aaliyah thank mm. you just thank you because I have watched this shit on the sidelines for 40 years and all I ever saw was it getting worse and mm -hmm. worse and worse over time? All I ever saw was, I, mean, I, could, I, could, I couldn't have black female friends because, <laughs> you know, I wasn't a part of any of that. And thank you. Thank you for just, just, just bringing it down because basically decade after decade, it just got worse and worse. You have an antisocial community raising antisocial people and they don't know how to act or B. Mm. Can I ask? Can I ask something? Okay, y'all. That Million Man March was in 1995. That was they. That was that right there. They they was supposed to get their shit together. Then we in 2023, going on 2024. How's that damn march supposed to be to make the black community better and men be better? But we in worse damn shit than what we have. Well, I can't say weeks. I'm not part of the community, but y'all catch my drift. But uh, Melanie, the issue is, first of all, they misnamed the march. They said the Million Man March. And what they really needed to say was the Million King Kong March. They got some t-shirts, though. They got some t-shirts. My my dad has a t-shirt from when he went to it, too. They got some y'all know Y'all know my y'all know my dad went to that. And when I got grown, I had the question. How did all them cicadas manage to get off work the same damn day? They have no job. What do you mean? <laughs> but to answer your question, Melody, the reason they did it was because it was never about freedom. It was about proximity to whiteness, but rather white women and white men's resources. They didn't give a fuck about the about... black community. Y'all forgot say... about the second. Uh, what year was the second Million Man's March? It, it happened again. Y'all, they, they, they nothing gonna change in that community. Stay far, far away from their asses. God damn. I would say that they got hot dogs, but wasn't that wasn't the Million King Kong March sponsored by the Nation of Islam? So it was I sponsored by it was sponsored by Mr. Lu, Mr. Uh, Louis uh, Farrakhan. Okay, so they weren't getting hot dogs, at least not pork. Talk about dogs. losers. The they all got a, they all got a T-shirt. Everybody got a T-shirt, a complimentary T-shirt. Look, that's a calypso singer. Louis Farrakhan is a Calypso singer. <laughs> you know, and let me just say this also. the Y'all's degeneracy is mainstream now. And I hate to tell y'all that we told y'all so, but we tried to, when we tried to tell a motherfucker something, they said, fuck you. You don't know what you talking about. Holes are winning. And that makes the I told you so just that much more satisfying because these bitches have done nothing but talk bad about us and try to cuss us out. So I'm going to need y'all to keep the same energy y'all had when y'all was, y'all said that we were out of touch with reality, that black women are not a monolith, that the holes are winning, that we just hate black women. And that we are just a bunch of dark skin slash light skin bitches hating on y'all because y'all know all the millionaires and being sugar babies and promoting niggas tricking off on you is really a flex. Because, see, I think the liberal white mainstream media may have something to say about that. You know, y'all have really gotten out of control when even they have started talking about the shit y'all yes. doing and embarrassing the fuck out of y'all with some of this shit y'all teaching. And let's see if y'all try to curse them out how y'all did us. I need y'all to get back on your channels and say they're just hating ass bitches trying to shame y'all because the fact of the matter is you can scream black women aren't a monolith all you want but look at y'all's representation and what your representation has been for years now we're the bad look for cussing though 
See, that's why this shit is too funny. And I'm really going to enjoy watching y'all fight for your lives after y'all cussed us the fuck out for trying to tell y'all the truth. Now y'all are all over Twitter on Sukiana page fighting for your life, talking about these ain't black women, these ghetto bitches. And now y'all really got the nerve to be getting all embarrassed and shit. Excuse me. Leave, uh, leave our shit the fuck out of y'all's mouth because y'all are not a monolith, remember? Because see, I was laughing my ass off because y'all embarrassed. Ain't nobody listening to you, though. Because I told DZ yesterday that nobody takes black women seriously in anything we do thanks to y'all. And I want y'all to start lying. Please start lying like y'all didn't promote this shit to young black women and children. Because I stand by everything I've ever said on this panel. And the same bitches that said fuck respectability politics because everybody is just racist anyway. Now those are the same bitches that are preaching that shit. But it was so wrong when we said it. So I guess respectability politics ain't just white folks shit after all. So I guess that means that you bitches preaching about carrying yourself a certain way. You must care what white people think too now, right? They better. They, they motherfucking these. better. Because guess what? That shit is on its way. I told y'all in China, it was from 2018. It was fully up in swing by the beginning of 2022. Now it's the made it to the European shores. And you know everything that happens over there. It's on its way over here, y'all. So you don't have long. I promise you, you don't. Okay? Like I said, go ahead and start practicing the shit now. Clear up your contacts and your phone that's up under your real number and all that shit. If you got to change your number, ladies, get rid of that goddamn filthy ass fucking email address. I suck dick 56 with two cherries on top. <laughs> 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 Daisy, do you remember oh. when? Do you remember when Tipper Gore tried to tell black women back in the nineties? She tried to help black women. Mm. Yes, she did, and you know what? A whole bunch of people came down on her. It got uh -huh. so bad that she just said, okay, I'm done with it. I'm done. Okay. And the, even, you know, all these reality shows with black women that, that, you know, pulling of the hair, the fighting and all that ratchetry, even white people even learned how to make money off of mammies. Y'all, Aaliyah told me something earlier today, right? It's already beginning. She told me and provided a link where Natalie Nunn, she got put out of a restaurant for being a character on the Zeus network. Hello, is this thing on? Is this thing on? You better stop associating with that shit, ladies. And see, I'm waiting for one of these slack mouth lying ass bitches to come right behind us doing live streams talking about how they brought this up and addressed this back in 1903 knowing damn well they're stealing commentary from us again because I'm waiting. Because see, all, that's all these thieving assholes do. Even the subscribers can see y'all following us behind the wall trying to steal our content and then going live shortly thereafter. You're not fooling anybody. Hell, them and their followers follow us around all day trying to swagger jack our commentary because they don't have any original thoughts rattling around in their empty ass heads. I'm at work all day, so I follow no one. I literally don't have the time. Hell, the whole time I'm at work, I'm hearing out the damn intercom all day. So they these bitches follow us. They follow us behind the wall, everywhere we go, which lets you know just how sick in the head they are because who pays money to spy on people they claim they can't stand? It makes no sense to me. That's how I know they're really low-key fans because I'm hearing a lot of our shit and a lot of these motherfucking live streams with them trying to present these as thoughts of their own. Like I talked about this shit prior to it. You a goddamn lie. You have stolen that shit word for word from this motherfucking panel. Just say you are a low-key fan. That's all it is. Cause, but see, that's where you and I differ because I'm not paying not one of my dollars to infiltrate someone else's group that I because I don't like y'all that much. So I will keep my lunch money to myself. Hell, all you bitches are rich. Let you tell this. And I work for mine. So I'm going to just keep my little money and buy me some Chick-fil-A or some shit. Because y'all no, are really Aaliyah. starting to get on my last fucking nerve. Aaliyah, you're not going to buy yourself some fried scripts from Captain D's? <laughs> this girl. Aaliyah, you, you, you talking real big for a CNA. Oops. I see the oh oh I exactly. forgot oh absolutely I'm gonna <laughs> exactly. go across see they are really starting to get on my fucking nerves so I really had to get that out on this live stream before DZ hit the end live broadcast tonight because I'm hearing a lot of our shit and y'all audience 
uh, our audience, uh, the people that fuck with us are bringing a lot of that shit back because they here too. These thieving assholes that don't have an original thought sitting up trying to present other people's ideas as they own. Stop plagiarizing other folks' shit and think for yourself. You should be ashamed of yourselves, but you're not. Let me tell you why that's happening, ladies. I'm going to tell you why that's happening. Because they don't believe in what they're saying. Half the time when they're on their goddamn platforms, you can't come up with an original thought if you don't have a vested interest in the topic in which you speak, okay? So you have to get a talking point from someone else that actually believes in that shit. These women, ladies, y'all remember, all of you were there. Stop body counting women. Stop trying to tell them how to dress. Let them be them. We being liberated, sexual liberation and all this shit here. Now that shit is getting real because you was being sexually liberated and your sons is out here fucking the fuck up. Now all of a sudden you're trying to gather yourself slowly but surely and trying to balance hating us with sounding like us at the same time. It has to be very, very confusing to hate somebody but know they right and then try to switch it up just a taste so it can sound like an original thought. Bitch, that's not an original thought. You said that the, not all of these black men were bad. You said that being doing your own thing and whenever I think, when something hit my head, it comes up and out of my mouth. Oh, that's not going to be socially acceptable anymore. You better take that shit behind closed doors. Ladies, those of you that got two brain cells to rub together, there's nothing wrong with being yourself but it's wrong to do it in certain settings that's it that's the fuck all if you're the type of person that talks a lot and you got a opinionate a, a, you know opinionated you know conversation that you want to have have that with your close people don't put that out here up under your government name don't do that in circles at work them people don't need to know what the hell you think and they need to know that you're a good employee that's it that's all but they'll tell you you know that slave talk you you just going along with the system well the system is what's keeping my lights on so i'm going with the motherfucker that keeps my lights on because i don't want to be in the dark and a lot of y'all are in the dark right now pull up my inbox reflects that it's a lot of suffering going on right and, now but DZ. i wanted to say to add to what you said dz Black women, it would also be very good of you to stop advocating for other people's problems or issues because that's going to backfire you too. Remember, black women, you don't have a social safety net. So. You don't. Oh, I thought you was getting ready to say that. You know. Jen. Oh no. Yeah. Don't, oh, no. don't, don't oh, even mention. Because see, there's that mask I'm telling you about. I have an opinion about what's going on over there. I wouldn't dare tell you it up here. Pull I up. I agree. Do not mention it. Don't even talk about the contention going on. Don't talk about mm -hmm. other people's other groups issues. You know, the Roy G. Biv group, shut your mouth. Like you don't need to have an opinion. You don't need to be vocal about your opinion on anyone else. Mm. Last time y'all paid y'all electric bill. Did they tell you that they wanted $40 and then they wanted the remaining balance in your opinion? I bet you they didn't because they don't give a fuck about your opinion. They want to know if you got the goddamn balance or you're going to be lighting that candle up that you bought off a of Facebook marketplace that the motherfuckers did a smash and grab on that $25. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say real quick, if you know what, they're going to talk, but I'm very curious to see how much they have to say once these commercial real estate um, uh, uh, loans readjust next year. I just want to see how they're going to act. When these landlords, when these landlords have to uh, have to wretch stuff up a bit, so just that, no, that's that's not Nefertiti, I told them these rent hikes ain't done. You saw a balancing, absolutely. But ladies, 2024 is gonna be fucking fire. Okay, she got some inside, you know. She got some inside business on that stuff, ladies. I told you about your savings, balance your budget, buy stuff that you need. Y'all are in a, for a very rude awakening and what a black man wants means nothing to me and it shouldn't mean anything to you. Th how's that for a paint book lesson? Mm -hmm. yes. I think that people often forget that you have two selves, the front stage self and the backstage self. The backstage self can have whatever the fuck opinions they want as long as they do it within the confines mm -hmm. of their own home. Your front stage self is, is your avatar, essentially. That is who you present to the world. You mm -hmm. cannot go out there presenting yourself in a negative light and expect to be respected. I can't walk out of my house by a nearly married woman with my ass cheeks hanging out because I'm a representative for not only my future husband, but my in-laws and the pe my aunt who raised me. I Look, can't go out and do these stupid things. It doesn't make sense. But Mistress Rogue, Aaliyah, Aaliyah, 
uh-huh. when we when we was talking yesterday and I had the contractor come in to put my Christmas lights on the roof and all that shit. What did I tell you before I got off that one on one with you? Oh, she got the hell off. She said she got to go cover up the doctor's stuff. <laughs> so he, she, <laughs> she didn't say it like that, but she said she couldn't she couldn't get him no free shows. Basically, he couldn't be looking at what belonged to the hubby. So now I, I, I had to I let her go. I respect that shit. Go ahead. <laughs> now I could have because I had on some boy shorts and a tank top. I could have opened the door when he got there. I could have, right? But that's not what you do. I, I, it ain't that much sexual liberation in the world where I would disrespect my husband like that. But, but sexual liberation don't mean you fucking everybody. Sexual liberation Jeez. means that you are out here, you're taking care of yourself, you are a sexually liberated woman and that you're comfortable with your sex and what that does for you. That don't mean you out here fucking 50 people named Larry. That don't no, they do not understand the difference between sexual liberation and respect. This is a married woman who has a whole husband. So out of respect for her husband and their home and the life that they have built together i don't need to be walking around half naked in front of another man that that's just fucked up because i so out of respect for her husband you can't do nothing but respect that that's grown woman business that's some shit these hoes wouldn't know nothing about because you got these lips that you liberated hoes out here saying well i'm grown i do what i want to do i wear what i want to wear it's my house and I, I ain't got to put on nothing if I don't want to. And what he looking for, he ain't even supposed to be looking and all this shit. And it's like, see, it's like, girl, do you know how dumb you sound? Especially if you got a whole husband or a whole man. That's why I say a lot of these bitches are seriously delusional. So when we tell y'all these people are sick in the head, that's just what the fuck we mean. Because the world is tired of black people and their bullshit. These people are not contributing a goddamn thing useful to society at this point. And if you doubt that, I would like for someone to click that link and please tell me exactly what the fuck it is that they're contributing to the world at large at this point. But you're not going to do that because y'all help me wearing bitches are just going to click the link and troll <laughs> and talk about how you're light skinned and how you're going to personally insult us like you always do instead of answering the fucking question. And that's why none of your opinions will ever matter to anybody of any importance outside of ghetto ass black people. Because you're not saving lives, you're not curing cancer, you're not building, providing, or mass producing anything. Y'all are not contributing a motherfucking thing, but you beg, leached, robbed, killed, and destroyed on a massive scale all across the country. And you verbally assaulted anybody who even remotely tried to tell the truth. And see, the black community has just been showing y'all's asses literally and figuratively all day every goddamn day and it's you know it's just that up more some of y'all are getting paid more than others to do it of course but if i just lie please point it out but you can't so you'll just start talking about what white people do and you know you're supposed to be the minority population or y'all just go back to y'all channel and just start shading the fuck out of us and then when you see the shit has actually caught on with the white stream media how fucked up y'all are then you will get on here and try to pretend like uh-huh see i knew it i had that stance all along i said that back in 1903 <laughs> okay uh-huh yeah right 1903 <laughs> that's quite a feat considering i believe it was 1952 when fiber optic was first invented so if you said that shit back in 1903 i bet somebody said it when they was building the motherfucking pyramids to you bum bitches like y'all always out here y'all be contrary for the sake of being contrary and the moment you get confronted with the fact suddenly you go to change in your motherfucking tune all i'm gonna say is this if you're gonna talk shit about us that's fine because i've heard i'm everything from a white woman to an asian woman to a cna to a call center worker to a prostitute i've been all of it everything you say i am i am all the things but i tell you what i'm not i'm not a bum broke bitch that's for sure Ladies, this can be done. All right. It's not all doom and gloom. All you got to do is move the right way. That's all you got to do. It can be a fucking car coming towards you at 200 miles per hour. Two steps to the right will save your life. It's not that deep. Just get the fuck out of the way. Don't stand there and say not all cars kill. What are you doing? Take two steps to the right. I Do the stanky leg and then keep it going over to the curb because it's, it's not that deep. It's easy to be honest with you. Once you get over that fence, that's when some more work comes. But you're doing the work for you, so you're worth it, right? So get busy. And don't say, well, my car is different. My car wouldn't do that. My car went unalive someone. Stop doing that. That's what they sound like. They always like to say that their son is different. Their brother is different. So, yeah, stop saying your car is different. Your your car is a car, right? Also, 
Go ahead, sample. <laughs> Look, DZ, you know we already talked about this. It's the holiday season, y'all. Don't be trying to sneak all sneak on back to Blackistan because it's the holiday season. Don't be trying to act like y'all are weird ass uncles and cousins and them ain't weirdos, okay? Like just just to throw that out there. I don't know if this fits with the topic, but I just it just popped yes, into my brain. I agree. Don't, listen, it is yes, it is December. We are ending out the year. Shout out yes. to y'all. Y'all made it through another year. Um, mm -hmm. divested, ashy free, okay, coined up, period, hydrated and glowing. Do not get emotional and go on over to your auntie Nim house, okay? Check, check it y'all. Y'all remember that, that comment that I put up there of the naker, right? Here's the deal. Black women are so available to them. I just went on ahead, ignored the shit out of them and talked to y'all. How about he backstage, okay? This is what I'm talking about. They expect for you as a black woman, no matter who you are, to be ready, readily available to sit up and have a conversation with them. Listen, uh, soup, bone or whoever. I don't converse with black men. All right. So I you can, talk a man I don't know. Working up a is. storm back here. He just been twerking all, all the whole lot. <laughs> Listen, even the name screams poverty. You know, back in the day, black people would save the bone from their uh, Thanksgiving meal and put it in the freezer, right? And then they'll bring it out on New Year's and they'll boil it to put more flavor in their black eyed peas. Even the motherfucking name is in poverty, y'all. That's that's they just they all about struggle. All right, uh, you might as well name yourself food stamp, nigga. Look. After everything that we've talked about, <laughs> they still taking you up the fuck up out of here. Let's go. In two separate shootings within hours, one of them fatal. 37-year-old Karan Roby is accused of killing his pregnant girlfriend in front of her four children after an argument at her apartment at 33rd and Center on November 19th. 30-year-old Tynesha Crawford died on scene. Now, about six hours earlier... Tynesha... Tanisha, y'all all know a Tanisha, right? Okay, this is nonstop fuckery. I know if y'all look at Tanisha, y'all have seen Tanisha in 1986. You've seen her in 2010. There's always going to be Tanishas. These names are running together, okay? They're all one motherfucker to me at this point. I don't even have time to cover this type of shit. I really, really don't. It's every 4.8 hours, y'all, that they taking you up out of here. And I got people still trying to come for the talking points when all I'm trying to do is save black women and girls lives. OK, this is ridiculous. Now, I'm looking at Tanisha right now. Come tonight at about 1130. I'm not even going to remember her name. I'm just going to keep it real with you. I'm not because I've covered too many of them. Somebody in Discord is going to say, hey, do you remember when you covered this girl named Shannon back in November? I'm going to have to say no because they're always taking y'all up out of here. OK, and this is not the first time this boy has done some shit like this. And you got women dressing y'all up and serving y'all up to this nigga. She's gone. She won't see 2024. She won't see the rent, the rent hikes. She won't see what's coming down the pipe, coming with these digital IDs, right? And you not being able to live in certain neighborhoods, even though you got the money. You got the money for the apartment. Hell, you might even have the credit score. Do you have the social score? She won't be here to see any of that. Now, depending on who you are, your opinion might be, well, good. She's better off. Who fucking knows? But if you're taking that stance, you got a lot of work to do when this realm right here is not fitting you and you're so miserable that you're considering death. Okay? DZ. Yes, ma'am. First off, I want to say rest in peace to what's her name? Tynesha. You see what I'm saying? So she didn't even her, remember her name. <laughs> so her daddy named Tyrone and her mama named Antonisha probably. Well, rest in peace to her. Um, I do think that's fucked up, but, um, I do want to also point out to, to y'all black women, y'all need to stop getting pregnant by these creatures. That is so dangerous for you to, that's like, the most dangerous stop. time. Yes. Yes. And it's, it's like, I just can't, I just really fucking can't 
believe that they're still doing this shit because it's just like you know it's not like back in the day like it's literally like there's just so much information there's so much there's so much re resources now like i just can't believe that they're letting this contaminated poverty peen run up inside of them and contaminate their insides and birth a, a demon spawn and it's like if 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 your baby daddy don't take you out, your son will. So it's just like, girl, can y'all just stop, please? It's crazy. And then later on today or or tonight or sometime this week, y'all, because it's just Tuesday, there's going to be a content creator. I can promise you that. Okay. She's a black woman. She's going to have a dating call-in show presenting you with bum motherfuckers and what they prefer in women. And there will be a ton of Tanisha's in that goddamn audience listening to what this nigga wants sometimes this bitch even puts motherfuckers in front of y'all that are in jail just look behind them look at the outfit and then look at the cinder blocks behind them you are sitting up under somebody that's presenting to you an inmate that's in prison and you're down there taking notes on what he wants i never understood that it's bad enough you want men that lost now you want the ones that are actually behind bars. Like how, like, what are you going to start looking at no. the ones, like looking but at the gravestones? Like, oh, this one was a doctor. Go ahead, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. He lives in a gated community. That's how men see that shit, okay? <laughs> well, no, he lives in a gated really community with luxury amenities. That's how they look at it. And you also have to remember that, Neff, that he's going to be faithful. He ain't going nowhere. No, so. he ain't. If he in jail <laughs> with other shit logs, he's going to be sucking them down to the base. Y'all already know the tea on that. Go ahead, Aaliyah. Oh, no. Dizzy, I told you why that is. Because they have to. Because if they actually get on here and tell the truth, which is go goes back to what I was saying earlier, they can't get on here and tell you not to date felons or ex-felons or, or people, men in jail. My thing is, if they told you that, how many... How many of their sons and brothers and uncles are they gonna they know are gonna have to be removed from the pool when you said don't date felons? That's why they can't tell y'all not to date niggas in jail when have they most of their brothers in there. That's why they can't tell y'all that. So they of course they're gonna sit up and they're gonna try to sell you this shit. And unfortunately, a lot of black women buy it. Just like somebody mentioned Nelly and Ashanti earlier. You know how many people congratulate in that situation when they don't see he set up and wasted 10 years of that woman's time and did not even claim her publicly the way he should have, embarrassed the fuck out of her. Now he trying to come back when his career is in the toilet and she still, you know, it's like, girl, bye. I looked into his past. All them Aaliyah, I'm I, don't, I don't even know the the situation. Who who what nigga did her like that? See, because I don't I follow mean, him like we're that. We're talking about Ashanti and Nelly. Remember, oh, you showed his okay. picture behind the wall. Okay. All them allegations he had towards him, and he all the women he paid off and shit like that. I'm like, are these people not looking at these men past and to see like that that whole meth thing that he got called with? I'm like, how? How can y'all think that this is what the best Ashanti could do? Somebody as beautiful and bad as she is. How can y'all think that this is really the best she could do? But I guess I'm just the hey ass bad wench bitch for saying that she deserved better than that bullshit and could have I mean, done better than that. Like, girl, bye. I remember when he was popular, black women used to fawn over Nelly. It was not one black woman that you could find that didn't say he was fine. And I'm sitting up here like, Okay, Where? thank you. And what's up Where? with the band aid? What is he cut in the face? Is, is that why, girl? I don't know. What gets me is that I was on, uh, you know, I'd be hanging out like a bat. They have a whole thread about how their Ashanti getting with this motherfucker is an enduring love story and a testament of the strength of black love and all this other bullshit. Ma'am, he wasted 10 years of her life, married another bitch, has several allegations that have been paid under the table and locked away by way of NDAs that we know about. They are, because even if you sign an NDA, the shit is a matter of public record. Let's not forget that. And piss Diddy is finding that out this week. So it's not an enduring love story. It's her not realizing she was worth more. Furthermore, he came back and made her a baby mama. He didn't even think about making the woman a wife. How the fuck is that a love story? I don't even want them to get their head out of their asses. Speaking of P. Diddy, y'all remind me when we get in Discord to show y'all. There's a, a little clip that surfaced with him and Cassie in it where she was hiding up under a blanket and shit and he was taunting her. 
that did not age well at all. That's probably from about nine years ago, I want to say. And it's like, wow, it's self-evident that he was really, really dogging that fucking girl out. I'm like, damn. He like, you ain't got nothing to say. It, it's it's only about 10 seconds. So just y'all remind me when we get back there to post that. But Easy. yes, ma'am. You know, you know, there's certain black women who don't give a fuck about what happened to Cassie and they don't I know. they happy and shit, the fucking weirdos. But I was going to say, speaking of old hoes like Ashanti who did, uh, she, she's seasoned enough to know fucking better. Like, she's a dumbass bitch. There's that other singing ass hoe, Monica. She got dumped by an inmate. <laughs> Mm, mm, she got mm. dumped by her <laughs> by her inmate, what her her incarcerated uh lover. You know, they was they were touting that as black love too. You know, she was a down ass bitch, you know, just to show you Monica not having that. Monica, what happened, girl? Did you put did you not put money on his commissary? And then he cut you off, girl. Yeah, for imagine being a Grammy nominated. I don't know if she won a Grammy or not, because that bitch could sang down. But it's too many man many melodies for me, bitch. Change your vibe. But oh, girl, she yeah, Georgia's she finest. She a, she a Georgia peach too. That girl is from girl. College Park. Okay, girl. My, not Monica with the sandals, girl. Monica, girl. She got dumped by an inmate, and Ashanti is pregnant by a degenerate. Oh my god. What is the ending of twenty twenty three? Snapple, she did win a Grammy for that duet she did with Brandy way back in the day, The Boy Is Mine. So she actually is a Grammy artist. But I wanted to say something about Nelly and Ashanti. Nelly's a good example of what we've talked about, how for cicadas, Black women are the come-up woman or the fall-down woman. So when Nelly was at his peak in the 2000s, early 2010s, he couldn't acknowledge Ashanti. But now that his career is over and is in the trash, now all of a sudden they're together and they're having a baby. Don't y'all see this bullshit? I, I got to give them it to them, though. I ain't even going to lie, because these black men out here securing the bag like a motherfucker on these black men. I, got to go, I must say, <laughs> I must say, I'm going to go ahead and give it to y'all, because when you look at ASL Rocky, the way, I mean, they securing the bag on y'all motherfuckers. I mean, you want to talk about hypergamy, that's some hypergamy for your ass in reverse. They are some of the most hypergamous motherfuckers on the planet, bitch. Uh, it, look, in all goddamn sectors, why is it always a nurse at the hospital that's dating the dude from nutrition and dietary services? Huh? Why is there always a teacher dating the goddamn janitor? Right? They, they, they hypergamous in every fucking industry and black women go for it every time. The shit is crazy. Oh, well. Right. Ladies. Um, you know, you experiencing a problem in the black community when you have a grandmother that took out her grandson. You've never heard such, you know, blasphemy in your life, you know, because that grandbaby, y'all, y'all don't get me to imitating, don't get me to imitating these grandmamas around this bitch who who love their grandsons. Well, homegirl had to take hers out. Let's go. Oxen is exclusive. For the first time, we're hearing from a relative of an elderly woman accused of shooting and killing her grandson. We first told you about the story last week. 76-year-old Mary Jordan charged with murder in the death of Dana Jordan. Court documents say she has confessed to the crime. And tonight, a family member is detailing what may have led up to it. Our Ariel Mallory in the studio now. Ariel, you talk with a woman who says she was the very first person Mary Jordan called after the shooting. Yeah, that's right, Lenise and Byron. I sat down with Alfe Prince, the cousin, to Mary and Dana Jordan. She says she refused to believe what her cousin was telling her could never see her doing something like this. Well, she quickly realized how real it was when she drove to her house and saw all the police. They know Mary wouldn't do nothing like that if she... No, Mary. She ain't got no teeth, do she? She has no like teeth. That. You don't do nothing like that. Let me tell y'all something. Did you notice, Miss? I'm getting on the news attention horn. They ain't bailed her out. Oh, she has a bail. Make no mistake about it. But Grandma is sitting up in that goddamn jail now. If the situation was reversed, they would have came and got Glocktavius up out of there. Right. What this woman is doing is attention whoring. Make no mistake about it. Attention is currency in the black community. If she thought that Miss Mary was a sweet woman like the Dancing is, she would have bailed her cousin out. 
No, but she doesn't mind having that camera in her face. Pull up, okay? But you got to know that that man had to have been abusing his grandmother. Had to. Because great uh, black women and their grandsons slash their sons, right? They You never hear about shit like this. And here's the other thing. She raised him, by the way. The mom wasn't in the picture like that. She had some issues. But the grandmother raised him. He's in his 30s, cutting a fool in her house. And she resorted to her last resort, taking him up off of here. Right? She's still in jail. Let's finish up. She didn't have to. That's what I would say. And Mira say, I'm sorry. Still a lot of questions surrounding what led 76-year-old Mary Jordan to allegedly shoot and kill her grandson, Dana Jordan. Tonight, one family member is speaking out, hoping to answer some of those questions. This was the scene at Mary Jordan's house on Circle Drive Wednesday morning. Crime tape surrounding the home. Alfe Prince, Jordan's cousin, says she got a call early that morning hearing something she couldn't believe. She called me back. And, uh, I, I told you I got to go to the doctor. She said, hey, <laughs> I just uh, killed Dana. I said, oh, girl, stop playing. You know you ain't killed nobody. Prince says she quickly realized it was no joke. Pritchard police say the 38-year-old was shot multiple times. Court documents say Mary was upset with her grandson from the night before. According to Prince, issues between the two started building up long before the shooting. I don't know what kind of hope. He had on Mary, but he had a hole on her. And I... Yeah, anyway, the kind of hole he had on her was he was on there living for free, being in his mid-30s, just being the classic bum and dusty that they normally are. And when you finally say, at your ripe age, look at that woman, no, you need to get up and do something, she ended up having to, you know, take his life. But it is what it is. When you see these type of situations, you know things are getting worse. Ladies... It's getting worse in the black community. OK, and with the stuff that's coming, it's going to be an issue for a lot of you. If you do not get your social circle together and get the fuck away because they have plans for these people. I'm not going to sound like a conspiracy theorist up here. I'm not going to. I'm just going to state facts. There are plans for this group. OK, you want to put as much distance between you and them as possible. Down is up and up is down right now. People are walking in stores in groups and walking out with the shit very slow. They're not running away, right? Grandma's taking their grandsons off the goddamn planet. And then you got a sector of bitches that's walking away from that community. Down is up and up is down. So you do what you got to do. Anybody got anything on anything we said up here tonight because I'm getting ready to pivot. That's one thing. Ladies, the cloud watching bitches, tis the season to get the fuck away from these niggas, nigga bitches, and niggrin. Mm -hmm. What is coming down the pipe is going to hurt. And you yeah. know these, how they say it, when the world catches a cold, black women get fucking pneumonia, essentially. And this is pneumonia. This is a state of emergency. Do not be so race blind and loyal to these motherfuckers who ain't never been loyal to you, have never given you even an nth of the grace they've given these niggas. Leave them where they are. Let them figure it the fuck out. That's how you, you gotta learn how to problem solve. If they ain't figured it out in what, 2,000 years, they're never gonna figure it out. At this point, it is survival at the fittest. Make damn sure you are the fittest. Hmm. I just want to say, if it was fuck you before, it was fuck you now. It's going to be later, too. It's fuck you later, too. Uh, to infinity and beyond? No, I just... You know, I just had this thought I would say that, but I also want to welcome some of these hoes to the club of mass classless and masculinity because, you know, all this cursing I'm hearing out here going on, it's mighty strange how it was classless, it was ghetto, and it was masculine when it was just us. I'm hearing a lot of language being used, and I'm, I'm, I'm having to clutch my invisible pearls now. I said, well, goddamn, we got several people that we need to induct into the club of masculinity. So welcome to the club, bitches. Girl, Aaliyah, you know they the great. They got the great value versions of the panel scattered around the BWE streets. They want to sound. They want to sound like us so bad, but it just don't take. They sound fucking no. stupid. They ain't got the juice. They ain't got it. Keep I'm saying sorry. fudge and f and a and all this bullshit. <laughs> they don't have the intellect. That's what it is. They don't have the juice and they don't have the intellect. <clears throat> Ladies, check it. 
there will always be mammies, okay? You'll always be drowning in mammies, but we're getting to the point where you have to put some distance between them and you you still have your social media. If you like looking at fuck shit, go right the fuck ahead. Just don't post no fuck shit, right? Don't have these people in your contacts. Get the practicing right now so that whenever the other shoe drops, you aren't going through shock because you, you know, it was snatched away immediately and you're in self-preservation mode. Get in self-preservation mode right now. There's going to be tons of them everywhere. Ladies, you are not hurting the black community by leaving them. Let them stay there because like I said, there's plans for them, okay? And you don't want any parts of it. Um, The bar is in hell, right? The bar is in hell. And like I just said, there'll always be mammies. Look at these high dating standards that up under the pink book and all these other fucking places. Um, let's go. What's your type? My type. I ain't yeah. got no type. You don't got no type. I ain't got no type. So a dude could be this little and still bag you? He could he could be that little and still bag me. What's up? She cap, but all right, so I'm look. Not cap. What's up? All right, bet. So how much a dude gotta make a year to be with you? He don't gotta make nothing a year. As long as he keep me good and he good, that's all that matter. Straight up, that's it? That's all that matter. What age do you think a dude should have life together? Ain't no age. At the end of the day, everybody get their shit differently. So you feel me? Like, mm -hmm. nigga have their shit together at 25, but another nigga have his shit together at 37. Like, right. it's different. Everybody don't have their shit together at a certain time. Ain't no age on that shit. Ain't no gap. I fuck with a nigga that's 25. I fuck with a nigga that's 47. What's up, baby? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll do anything. If you turn your ass over, I'll go ahead and gobble down one of your turds. Uh, d d what you mean? I, I bet anybody can bag me. What, what, what's up? What's going on, baby? The thirst is real, okay? And these type of bitches are going to get gobbled up, right? And you just grab your popcorn and watch. But at some point, you're going to have to watch from a distance, okay? That's it. That's all. Discord time. I love you ladies to the moon and back. I really, really do. Take care of yourself. Bye. I let him shit in my mouth. Go ahead and piss down my throat. <laughs> What's up, baby? Piss on me. Weirdo. <laughs>